Good morning. Welcome to Lighthouse Church Online. I uh, hope you had a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Maybe you got lots of presents. Maybe you overdid it a little bit and today you're just relaxing or maybe you have family around. Well, wherever you're doing, whatever you're up to, we know God is with you and uh, we love you here at Lighthouse and I hope you can join us in person again soon. So I've got a quick short message for you this morning. I was just thinking about what, uh, what's going on and what I could bring in a message from John, 2 John 1, chapter 3 comes to mind. And going through my mind was things like presents. What kind of presents did you get for Christmas? Maybe you got one of a few different types of presents. You know, maybe you got an unwanted present, uh, maybe an unnecessary present, or maybe it's just something that's fun. And, uh, but hopefully you got something you really need uh, you've opened that present and going, oh, that is just what I've been looking for. Or maybe you'll be re-gifting or returning as soon as the shop opens uh, in the next few days. But I've been thinking about the kind of message I want to bring. And this scripture here, it says, grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son in truth and in love. And I think the, the, the presence of God, him being here with us, is the ultimate gift. And that's what God really wants, is to be with us. But with his presence comes this overwhelming sense of his grace, his mercy, and his overwhelming sense of peace. And they always come to us in truth and in love. Because God has always desired to be with his people, desired to share his love with his children. And when we think about God's grand plan or the stages of history, it's God that is preparing a place, whether it was a garden, a, a land, a temple, somewhere where he could connect with the human beings and where heaven and earth could connect until ultimately his plan is to bring us all together again, finally in the end where death can no longer separate us. I have three quick points I want to bring out from this scripture. And there are actually three gifts here. The first is the grace of God. The grace of God as a gift for us. Gifts are often uh, timely, aren't they? They're, they're saying, I, I just needed that just now. And that becomes a real gift to us. Or maybe we're sitting at home wondering, how, why do I need so many pairs of socks when I've only got two feet um, maybe you're looking at the, all the leftover food, wondering what to do with all of that. And sometimes we often have more than we need. And when we think about God's grace, we always think about the abundance of God's grace. And is that because God is too generous or is that because God really thinks we need a little bit more grace? And how many know that's true at times? Or does God give us the abundance of grace because that's just the right amount that we need? In Hebrews 4, verse 16, it says this, Let us then feel very sure that we can come before God's throne where there is grace. There we can receive mercy and grace and help us when we need it. And I'll add to that, where we need it the most. And sometimes we need a little self-awareness. We need a little understanding of where we are as human beings, where we are in our stage of life what we need to improve, if there's anything we need to improve, and what is the end goal of our life, and what are we doing to direct ourselves towards that end goal, and what are we doing in life to make sure that we're lined up and following that right direction. And God's grace, uh, when we really understand how much God's grace is abundant, we realize that we actually need that much of it. So we can set ourselves Goals. Maybe you're thinking already for your New Year's resolution. Maybe you're thinking, what goals can I set? Even small ones that would set me up in the right direction that I know there's somewhere, something that's missing in my life and I need to aim in that right direction. But what if we discover that we've been going in the wrong direction altogether? I think the gift of God's grace comes to us as a power of transformation. It comes into our lives. In Colossians 1, Paul writes and speaks of um, 
of hearing and truly understanding the grace of God. And maybe that's a small goal for the year to come, that we can really understand what the gift of grace is for our lives and understand that even life itself is a gift. Eternal life, we know, comes through Jesus Christ, and he is the ultimate gift giver, isn't he? And that grace is found in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is also where we find God's presence. And isn't that what we're really seeking Isn't that what we really desire in life is God's presence? And Jesus said, didn't he, Matthew 6, he says, Seek first my kingdom, my presence, and my righteousness. And we know how does righteousness come? Through grace. Seek first the kingdom of God and my righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. So the things we feel like are missing in our lives, if we seek first God and his kingdom, he's going to take care of all the rest. And we have to know about ourselves. We have to have that self-knowledge, that self-understanding. We have to know that we're made in the image of God, that our lives have value, and that there's reason and purpose in us beings, that we do not waste the gifts that God has been given us, especially the grace But that's where we need our second gift, and that's mercy. That's my second point. Mercy is where we don't get the judgment that we deserve. It's almost like delayed judgment, because we know there's ways that we have wasted the gift of God's grace, or we've taken for granted our privilege, our privileged position, or we're taking advantage of the grace of God. And if we're honest, there's maybe times where we haven't put God first. Or we've got idolatry. That's what that means. We've got other things in our heart. Idolatry in our heart means we're putting other things before God. And we can tell this in where we show our affection, where we give our time. You know, time is spelled L-O-V-E, where you give your time is often where you love. And from history, uh, we understand that there's times when God's people didn't put God's first. They didn't put their trust in God. They put their trust in false things. And in, in idols, and that's where that idolatry comes from. And we not, might not worship a wooden statue, but there's probably times we've put other things in place of God in our hearts. And when they stopped putting their trust in God, you see the people of God were moved originally from the garden removed, later removed from the promised land. But time and time again, the mercy of God is with them. Even Adam and Eve being removed from the garden was an act of mercy because they didn't God didn't want them to live forever without his presence. Isaiah knew this as he wrote this in Isaiah sixty three, verse seven. He says, I will recount the gracious deeds of our God, the praiseworthy acts of our Lord, because of all the Lord has done for us and the great favour to the house of Israel that he has shown them according to his mercy, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. You know, Isaiah was often speaking out against the things that they had done wrong. Looking at pre-exile and post-exile, Isaiah covers both those periods, depending on which end of it, Isaiah, you're in. But it's shown the mercies of God. They're shown despite their unwillingness, despite them worshipping other gods, despite them missing the mark continually, God's mercy is there because he loves us. And he delays that judgment. And he gives us time to sort ourselves out and put our lives back on track. Isn't that a gift of God, his mercy? My final point, I was doing grace, mercy. My final point is peace. And Jesus Christ, we know, is the Prince of Peace. Didn't the angels come, when the Christmas angels, when they proclaimed to the shepherd, good news, peace on earth. In other words, the war is over. There is peace. God has making peace with human beings. And he brought the Prince of Peace. That's Jesus Christ himself. And he has come to make peace with us. That word peace in the Hebrew is the word shalom. And that's such a depth to that understanding of that. That language talks about nothing missing and nothing broken. This peace is only truly possible when Christ reigns in full. And we know we have that 
end of time peace to come that the revelation talks about. Revelation means appearing. When the appearing or uh, Christ is revealed to us, we understand then we'll come in peace, but we'll come fully into God's peace. But there is a foretaste of that gift of peace. As uh, has been preached recently here by Julia, uh, last week Julia preached. Have a listen to that one. You know, there is a peace of God that goes against our natural understanding. And even though we're going through such challenging times, the gift of his peace can come to us. Again, Isaiah, this time verse 32, verses 16 to 18. He says this, Then justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness will abide in the fruitful field. And the effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of the righteousness will be quietness and trust forever. How many need a bit of quietness in their home and trust? And my people will abide or will live in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, in quiet resting places. Isn't it interesting that righteousness is linked to grace, righteousness is linked to mercy, and righteousness is linked to with peace. And I think being right with God, which results in us having eternal life and being able to be in his presence. You can't be in God's presence unless you're right with him. But the good news is God makes us right with him. Why? Through his grace, his mercy, and his peace. I tell you, this kind of peace is sometimes... <laughs> so needed in our lives. And I pray that for you today, that you experience God's grace, that you experience God's mercy, and that you experience his peace. These are God's gifts, and these are just what we need. But what's interesting is they're not just what we need for ourselves are actually what we need to be able to give to others. And maybe we need to pray. Maybe we need to say, you need to ask. Because the scripture says, ask and you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive. So ask for these gifts so that we can keep on giving to those around us. You know, Jesus talking about forgiveness in the Gospels. He says, as you give talking about gift giving, talking about forgiving, it will be given back to you, pressed down, shake it together and running over. And the understanding of what it means to receive God's grace is fully realized in us being able to give God's grace to other people, to give God's mercy to other people and to give the peace of God to other people. Wouldn't that be a gift for your home this Christmas? to be at peace. And when we understand this all comes with God's presence, that's God's ultimate plan and purpose, isn't it? His desire to share his steadfast love with us, with his children, that we're part of his grand plan and that God is prepared. He did in history prepare a place for them, a land for them, that, that connection between heaven and earth and ultimately that place where God's presence can be with us. But he's given us a foretaste He's given us a, a little bit of a guarantee, and that comes with his Holy Spirit. And I want to close with you this morning just with a little bit of prayer. God's plan is to bring us together ultimately in the end, but in the here and now, we can have that foretaste. And I want to pray for you right now that the gift of God's grace and peace and mercy will be with you right now wherever you are, in your home, in your marriage, with your children, with your co-workers, with your neighbors, with those around you, with your friends, that God will give you these gifts that you may be able to re-gift those gifts and pass those on to others around you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your abundance of your steadfast love. Thank you, Lord, that you have made it possible to give us life and life to the full and eternal life to be with you in the end. Thank you for that foretaste of your Holy Spirit. And I pray that Holy Spirit presence that's here right now goes into every home, into every person that's watching or listening this message. In Jesus' name I pray.
Amen. Amen. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you in person very soon or joining us again online. God bless. Take care.